compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness to kindness of a savior. The hope of the nation. the mountains my God is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave Take me as you find me, all my fears and failures, and feel my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender, I surrender. mighty to save, He is mighty to save, forever, author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. The concept of the right head man it's a concept by which someone that has authority dedicate all his authority to the other one and he remain inactive and that one remains active when you look at the story of joseph and the uh, when there was a drought that they were uh, going to 
uh, for eight years um, and um, and Joseph began to interpret the dream of um, of Pharaoh and Pharaoh saw that there is the Spirit of God that is working in Joseph and Pharaoh began to say that he gave him his ring and became inactive he gave his power to Joseph that he can be the one active though he has power over Egypt and can overthrow Joseph because he was the Pharaoh but he made Joseph his right hand man and in that process he became inactive and Joseph became active so when the Bible later tells us that Jesus is the right hand man of God or he's seated at the right hand of the Father that means that God has given authority to Jesus Christ and he is inactive and Jesus is active in other words Jesus is in charge it means that every executive decision that he makes sees fit to make it is established exactly as Joseph was where he could make decisions of how the running of Egypt should be and how the distributions of food should be and who's going to get the food and how to save uh, the food during the plenty time and how to distribute it during the other time so it's the same way as Jesus Christ Jesus has been given authority that means Jesus is active he is the one in charge he is the one in charge every executive decision that it takes it is what is taken by God like how every executive decision that was taken by Joseph it was exactly as taken by Pharaoh so the concept of the right hand man let us know that the one that we believe in the one that we put our trust in is in charge and he will save us because he is in charge rest assured if jesus is the right hand man of god that means he is the one that has been given in an active power and rest assured that your salvation is secure for jesus is in charge Spiritual giving is something that each and every one of us needs to know. What is spiritual giving? How do you sow in the spirit? Because Jesus said that if you store up your house where thieves and robbers cannot reach, how do you give in the spirit? How do you give to the spirit? It's when you give through the response of the word of God. Because the words that I speak unto you, say the Lord Jesus Christ, they are spirit and they are life. And each time as a child of God, you want to sow in the spirit so that you can reap. Because you only reap when you sow in the spirit. It's when you give in response to the gospel. Give in response to the word that you have received. Each time you give based on emotion, you don't reap. Each time you give based on if you love the man of God or not, you don't reap. But when you give in response to the word that you're hearing and the word that is coming and the word you are receiving, then you are sowing in the spirit. And when you sow in the spirit, then you reap a hundredfold. Even when you tithe or when you give, whatever types of giving, it has to be in response to the word of God. Be in response to the gospel that you are receiving. And I want to urge each and every one of you from this message that I received from the Lord. Give in response to the gospel, not, into, not to emotions, not even to, to if you love the person or not. But the response to the word, because the word of God is spirit and it is life. God bless you.
One of the greatest, greatest tragedy of every Christian or many Christians in the world today is to fall out of love for Christ. Many don't know it. Many they think that they are, but many have. How do you know that one has fallen out of love for Christ? It's when the activities that they did at first, which when they just got born again, the excitement that they had before, it's no longer there. And that is why the Lord has given me an assignment when I preach the gospel, is to ignite the love for Jesus, not as a command, but as to bring out his love to each and every person and what he has done, so that they can ignite the love that they had in order for them to fellowship with him in prayer, to fellowship with him in studying the word, to fellowship with him. Because it's not about the traditions that are done in your church, but it is about your fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is about your personal love with him. It's about the heartbeat for the master. And that is why I'm preaching the gospel so that I can ignite that love for you because many have grown of the love of Jesus Christ. And it is my prayer that as you listen to my teachings, as you hearken to my teachings, all my teachings might ignite how much Jesus loved you. So that the love that you had from him from the beginning might come back again. And you might love him like you did. Do everything for him. Because there are many enemies that have quenched your love for him. There are many enemies that have quenched your love for him, which can be offense, which can be, uh, you know, disappointment, which can be a lot of things they, they make, or which can be the, the crowdness of the world. But I want you to know, listen to the gospel, because the gospel is the love message of Jesus Christ to you, so that it can ignite the first love that you had for your beloved love, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And this got nothing to do with tradition, not church tradition, but your personal love for him. Love you. Stay connected to my team. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Be greeted in the mighty name of personal Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Let's clap hands for Jesus Christ. Welcome to the service. Welcome to the service. I hope you had time to pray um, as well as you were worshiping. We also had time. We were praying and we had time to worship too right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say amen. Amen. Say we thank you, Lord. We thank, thank you, Lord. For this time. For this time. To pray. To pray. To worship. To worship. And to hear your word. And to hear your word. Glory to God. I'm excited. I'm very excited for the word uh, that I'm about to give you. I'm I'm just praying that I minister to you this word as I've heard it. And everything that God wants you to hear, my prayer is that you hear it. It's quite um it's quite, uh, not say difficult, but it's quite, uh, especially when you look into glorification and adoption, it's something which is very, um, you know, sometimes for people to, to understand it, it might, it might, it can, yeah, with the natural mind, it might not be easily understood, but I know by the Spirit of God, you're going to catch it, right? You're going to catch it. Because uh, it is very, 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 very important. Say very, very important. Very, very important. Because this completes all the series that, not all the series, but the series that we started on uh, predestination, election. Uh, we, we, we spoke about predestination. We spoke about election in the gospel. We are still in the gospel. We spoke about uh, justification, right? You remember that? Mm -hmm. Then we spoke about sanctification. And now we're finally into the last part of this codifications of the gospel which is glorification say glorification, glorification. i remember the was saying that you want to teach on glorification in march and i was like no by 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 february i'll be done and guess what it's march <laughs> <laughs> are you hear what i'm saying yeah. because to me it made sense because everything was like this week that so my plan was that by 
I even said January will be done. January will early February will be done. And guess what? The Lord told me that when you reach glorification, it will be much. And it is much. Praise the Lord. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So we're going to be doing glorification. 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 Glory to God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Romans. Let's, let's go back to the book of Romans because we are we are wrapping up this um, uh, this uh, codification of the gospel. Then we'll be looking into other things that God is going to talk to us about. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And I, I, I now request us to just do a scripture reading before I start teaching you, right? Mm -hmm. Just a scripture before I start teaching you something. Uh, so, 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 Romans 8... Romans 8. We're going to start in verse 1. I know we have King James there, and we have New King James, right? Um, I just want us to look into something, because there's something I want us to get here. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. This will show that you participate so that you don't miss anything, because glorification is very important to be understood. Say amen. 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 Now, the Bible says in, uh, King James says, uh, oh, this is First Corinthians. Can you imagine? All right. It says, Therefore now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Right? Mm -hmm. But I want to read it in a C CEV version. CSV. Sorry, CSV English Standard Version. Right? It says, Therefore there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Why there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus? Verse 2. Just go to verse 2. It says, For the law, after that the law of the spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Do you see that? Mm. I know King James at this part, who walk not according to the faith. It's only King James and New King James and Amplify that at, at that part. But the rest of the versions, they don't, there's, that, that part is not there. Are you hear what I'm saying right now? Mm. The part that is there is that therefore there is now no condemnation. And the question is, why? Right? The question to is why. Why there is no condemnation for you? Verse 2. It's very clear why. It's easy, easy, ESV version. For the law of the spirit of life. Right? For after that the law of the spirit of life has set you free from the law of what? Of sin mm -hmm. and death. That's why there's no condemnation. Because what is the law of sin and death? It is the law of Moses. Right? It is the law that governs the whole world. That law, I told you, is not the law just of Moses, but it's the law that governs the whole world. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Yeah. Many religions today, they are based on the law. I want to tell you, even culture, even culture, black culture, right? Uh, even other religions, all of them are based on the law. Why? Why are they all based on the law? Because the law was instituted by angels. Remember I told you that. You see, the system of the law, it's, how can I put it in, a, in this way so that people understand me what I'm trying to say. The system of the law has been so much corrupted. Not that the law is corrupt. No, the law is good. But it's been corrupted because of the institutors of the law. Some institutors were not faithful. You know what? Okay. Some institutors are institutors that went against God. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm. That's why you have different beliefs in the world. That's why you have different um, religions in the world. Because the institutors themselves were very corrupt. Mm. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying right now? Mm. And that's why you find in culture, you still find the law of the Bible in culture. You still find the way they do things is in the law of the Bible because they were institutors of the of the, of, of the law, but most of them, because the Bible tells us one third of the angels, they fell with the devil, right? Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then the other one remained with God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. You find Buddhism, study Buddhism, you'll see the law is there. Study Muslim, you'll see the law is there. Mm -hmm. Study African culture, you'll see the law is there. Whether, even though they believe in dead people, to show that because the institutes are corrupt, the law has been corrupted. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why Jesus came as the son of God. Do you get me what I'm saying? Amen. And when he came, he fulfilled the law of God. The true law of God, he fulfills it. And then he ended the law. And then he gave us grace. He gave us what? Grace. He fulfilled it for us to God. Then he gives us grace. And the rest of the world is still stuck in the law. 
That's why the Bible calls it the law of sin and death. Because the law, it will produce sin, no matter what. Because you won't be able to keep it. And sin will result into what? Into yeah. death. That's why it says the law of the spirit of life. What's the law of the spirit of life? It's Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Has made me free from the law. That's why there's no what? Condemnation. Because I'm not under law, but I'm under what? I'm under grace. I'm under grace. Say I'm under grace. I'm under grace. And grace is truth. It says grace and truth came by who? By Jesus Christ. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So there's no condemnation. Say there's no condemnation. There's, there's no, no condemnation. condemnation. Now listen, verse 3, he says this. He, say, he says in verse 3, For God has done what the law, wicked by, wicked, 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 yeah, wicked by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin. He condemns sin in the flesh. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. In order that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Now get it. This. Jesus, what is it saying here? I'm not going to teach everything, but I just want to make you understand. How did, how did we come to no condemnation? He says he sent the son in the likeness of our own bodies. Right? Mm -hmm. Jesus was able to condemn sin in our body. Right? fully and this one is very important in order that the righteousness requirement because the righteousness requirement was by the law so him managing to fulfill the law to the start from his birth to the end are you hearing what i'm saying right now Amen. from his birth to the end managing to fulfill the law from that time to that time he fulfilled the require the righteousness requirement he met it what was required he fulfilled it. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. He fulfilled it for who? For us. Say for us. For us. Say for us. For us. Yes, he says, might be uh, first, he says, uh, might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit, right? Amen. Verse 5, I'll explain what does it mean. It says, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. It will explain itself. The Bible will explain itself. Verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh set their mind on things of the flesh, right? But those who live according to the Spirit set their mind on things of the Spirit. Right? Now, verse 6 now. He says, uh, for, to, for, for to set the mind, uh, for to set the minds on the flesh is death, and to set the minds on the Spirit is love and peace. Verse 7, he says, For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to the will of the law, neither it cannot. For those who are in the flesh cannot please who? God. Now, verse 9 now is important so that you understand what he was saying. You, however, do you see that? You, however, say me. me. You are not in the flesh. So now he's telling you a position. You, however. So it's a, okay, okay. I heard you, but now you see now Paul what he's saying. Now he's saying but you, however, say me. Me. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. How are you in the spirit? In If in fact the spirit of God dwells in you, you are in the spirit because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. He's telling you, what I was talking about, those in the flesh, those in the spirit, I was not putting a confusion on you. Because you, you are in the what? In the you are in the spirit. How are you, how are you in the spirit? By saying, mm, no. You are in the spirit because the Holy Spirit lives in who? In you. So the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is what makes you your, your location to be the Spirit. Anybody that does not have the Spirit of God is in the flesh. He's in the what? In the flesh. Yeah, he's in the flesh. You are in the Spirit because the Holy Spirit lives in you and he cannot leave you. He's there forever. Say he's there forever. He's there forever. Say he's there forever. He's there forever. He says you are, however you, uh, says, but you are in the spirit. If the spirit of God, verse 9, dwelleth in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So, so never think you are in the flesh. Don't you hear people telling you that, oh, these believers, they're in the flesh. No believer is in the flesh. The question is, is the Holy Spirit in you? If the Holy Spirit is in you, you are in the spirit. Right? Amen. Say, I'm in the Spirit. I'm in the Spirit. Say, I'm in the Spirit. I'm in the Spirit. You see, you are in the Spirit. Verse 10, it says, But if Christ be in you, though your body be dead because of sin, uh, verse 10, sorry, the Spirit gives life because of what? Of righteousness. 
Verse 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwelleth, dwelleth in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall also give life to your mortal body through the spirit who dwells in you. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. It tells you that the Holy Spirit is in you and there's a work that he's doing. There's a what? There's a work that he's doing. He's vitalizing your mortal body. Say, fertilize your mortal body. We're going to continue reading that. We're going to con I'll come back to this one. I just want to read verse 12. It says, So then, brethren, we are debtors not of the Lord to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if through the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you may live. You see, it's the inward working of the Holy Spirit. Through the Spirit, not through your mind. But through the what? The spirit. Through the Spirit. Say through the spirit. through the spirit. That's why each and every time you confess the Holy Spirit is at work in me. There's a changing that is happening in you. There's a what? A change. There's a change that is happening in you. He says through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. Say through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. He says in verse 14, For all who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery, fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. Jesus Christ. Right? Mm -hmm. As sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Glory to God. That means the Holy Spirit gives us the new birth. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? This scripture is about the Holy Spirit. First of all, the inward work of the Spirit, and through the Spirit, there is sanctification. You find yourself now that there are things through the Spirit. You are able to do certain things through the Spirit. It's somebody here what I'm saying right now. Mm -hmm. Then number two, it tells you that the Holy Spirit gives you what? Uh, sonship. Mm -hmm. He gave you sonship. That you may cry what? Abba Father. Verse 16, it says, The Spirit himself also, bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The Spirit of God also becomes your testimony, your evidence mm. that you are a child of God. Your proof that you are a child of God. Do you see that? Mm. And if children then heirs and, and heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided that we suffer with him in order that we may be glorified with him. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. You are in the suffering of Christ right now. Do you know that the fact that you are saved there are people that will never love you. The world hates you because you love Jesus. So you are in the suffering. So someone said, how can I be in the suffering? By believing in Jesus Christ, you are already in the suffering of Christ. Because the world does not believe in that. Some of them, they look at you as stupid. So you are in the suffering of Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Amen. You are. So don't look for another suffering and say and start calling poverty. No, no, that's not the suffering it's talking about. By believing in Jesus, you are the enemy of the world. You are what? The enemy of the world. Yeah, you are the enemy of the world. The world does not like you. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Although they will, they will, will soon they will find out the gospel. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. He says, if, if, if children then heirs and, and uh, if we suffer for him. Okay, verse number 18, he says, For I consider the sufferings of this present time not worth compared with the glory that is to be revealed in us. For the creation wait eagerly. Longing. This is what is important. Let's start in verse 18 again. Can you go back to verse 18? For I consider that the suffering of this present time is not worth compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. Say the glory. The glory. That will be revealed in us. Revealed. We have started talking about glorification. Mm. He says whatever you are facing right here. Right? Mm. Whatever that you might come across right here. Right? Whether it's rejection. Right? Whether it's... Uh, is, is, uh, is persecution. Yeah. Whether it is whatever it is that you might find, get here in this present age that is against Christ. He says it is not compared to the glory that will be revealed in you. Mm. Hey, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you getting this? Amen. We're talking about glorification now. In other words, there is so much glory that is about to be revealed in you. Mm. You'll be so surprised. Now we're going to get into that, right? Verse 19, he says, He says, For the creation waits with eager, longing for the revealing of the sons of God. He says, Even the creation itself, it's longing for you to be, to be glorified. For your glorification. Say glorification. Glorification. Yeah, they talk about glorification because that's the, that's the last salvation. That's the end of our salvation. It's called glorification. He says, the creation also longing for the revealing of the sons of God. I remember one time when I was in university, we used to say it's the year of the manifestation of the sons of God. But there's no year of the manifestation of the sons of God. It's something that is going to happen when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. 
but I know I used to love saying that, right? But now I understand that the revealing of the sons of God is glorification. It's what? Glorification. Yes, let's continue now. He says, verse 19, eh? For the creation waited an long, an eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. Verse 20. The creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. If in the creation also when Adam fell, it was also subjected to bondage, to futility. Are you what I'm saying right now? Amen. You, you get this. Amen. Then in verse 21 he says, he says, that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and to obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. In other words, the creation also will also, once we are glorified, right? Once we have received glorification, when I say glorified, I don't mean like, we, you know, let me leave you, but it, it's the same word, right? Once, if, once we have received glorification, the creation also will receive its own glorification. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah, we read verse 20. We said from with us, the children of God. Verse 22, it says, For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in pain of childbirth until now. Mm. Not only the creation, but we ourselves. We have the first fruits of the Spirit groans inward as we wait eagerly for the adoption as sons. The redemptions of our body. Say the redemption of our body. The redemption. So what is glorification? Glorification is when we are revealed as sons of God. We are what? Revealed as sons of That's God. That's the first thing. Number two, what is glorification? It's when it's when the redemption of our bodies. Say the redemption of our bodies. The redemption of our bodies. Mm -hmm. And it's something I can teach, but it's something I cannot Give it to your mind because your mind cannot catch it. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Verse 24 says this. For in this hope we were saved. Right? Yeah. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. He tells you glorification is our hope. Is somebody hear what I'm saying right now? Amen. Now that we are hope, we are waiting, it's still our hope. What does the Holy Spirit do in the meanwhile? Verse 26. Verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit help us in our weaknesses. Right? At this present point, where we are waiting for us to receive bodies that are not earthly bodies, but they are heavenly bodies. Do you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Bodies that are not human bodies, but they are called celestial bodies, divine bodies. Say divine bodies. Divine, divine bodies. bodies. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Amen. While we are waiting for that, while we are still in this body that decays, he says there's a work that the Holy Spirit is doing. What is that work? Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Amen. The Holy Spirit is busy here. We are being told that the Holy Ghost is not just seated. He is busy doing a work in us. Amen. First of all, the Son, Jesus Christ, did a work for us. Right? That's what we preach. Once we receive the message, believe in him, the spirit comes and continue to do the work in what? In us. Why is the Holy Ghost doing the work in us? Preparing us for glorification. Is somebody hear what I'm saying right now? Amen. He is doing a work in you because he's preparing you for what? Glorification. For glorification. He's, he says now, likewise, the spirit also help us in our weakness. For we do not know what we pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groan is too deep for words. In other words, the Holy Spirit, how is he helping me in my weakness? How is he helping you in your weakness by interceding for us? Palakasuta. This is too much. That means the Spirit of God is always making intercession for us each and every time. The Holy Ghost is interceding for us. Can you imagine you are having an intercessor for you based on your limitations, based on your weaknesses? Huh? Somebody who is covering you in prayer. Hey, is somebody getting this? Amen. Somebody who is standing in the gap. The word intercession also means he stands in the gap for you. Why? It's because the Holy Ghost did not come into us in order to be our supervisor. No, the Bible calls him the helper. 
He calls him the who? He did not come to supervise us. He came to do a work in us to prepare us for glorification. How will the glorification happen? I've already read for you where we read. He said the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead vitalized your mortal body. He's the one that will do the glorification for us. When the Lord appears, the Holy Spirit will just and all of a sudden glorification has happened. I don't even know how to explain it. That's what I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? New bodies, the Spirit of God now take off. The work that has been doing inwardly coming into maturity manifest and we realize now we have new bodies. Shoo! We go by rapture. But we'll get into that. Let's continue reading. Is somebody hear what I'm saying right now? Amen. So he makes intercession for us. Um, he says, likewise, verse 26, sorry. Likewise, the Spirit help us in our weakness, uh, for we do not know what we ought to pray, uh, but the Spirit himself intercede for us with groanings too deep for words. Mm. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Say hallelujah. Mm. That means he's always praying according to the will of God for us. Mm. Yes, that's why. That is why I have so much confidence in this gospel. Can you imagine? Other gospel, they are not sure. Is this? Is it the will of God? Uh, if it's the will of God, it will, no, 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 no. I have, I have someone twenty four seven, making intercession, standing in the gap for me. Mm. Huh? Yeah. You see, and his intercession is according to the will of God. This will of God, it's more than just the word of God. This is talking about the time, the place you must be. Where God wants you to go. The opportunities that are supposed to come unto you. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Amen. The money, the, the revelation. He is making intercession for you. The timeline. Everything. Huh? When Even when you have stepped into the wrong way. The Holy Spirit is able to manipulate the timeline. So that it gets you back into the right way. Hey. Things that we cannot understand with our minds. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Let's say for example. You were supposed to be. In a certain timeline, this is the timeline for you where you're supposed to finish this and do this and do this. And then the enemy distracts you because your body is also weak, right? And then it distracts you. You are in the wrong timeline. The Holy Spirit, when he enters, he has a way to bring you back into the timeline. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Amen. Bring you back to a timeline and wonder way, okay? And you think maybe you're supposed to go to, to study in Jobek so that you can meet opportunities there, but you are still here. It's somebody understand what I'm saying right now. Mm-hmm. And the Holy Spirit makes the timeline to suit. You say, okay, even if you have made, you have taken the wrong step, but it makes intercede too deep. Is somebody understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Then later on you find out an opportunity happens somewhere. And all of a sudden, God divines connects you to that place. Mm-hmm. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Amen. He makes intercession according to the what? To the Say according to the will of God. According, according to, to the, the will, will of God. Say according to the will of God. According to the will of God. Ah, then I cannot be distressed. Then verse 28. Let's read verse 28. I just want to read Romans 8 before I explain. And we know that we, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. He says the reason why the fact that the Holy Spirit is making intercession for us according to the we know that all things are working together for my good. Said they are working together. They are they are working working together. together. For, my good. For my good. He says all things. Say all things. all things. Even if you receive disappointment today, it works together for your good. Mm-hmm. It, it what? It, it works, works together. together. Yes. Even if, even if, let's say you were waiting for something, something, or some people, something happened to some people and they, they don't seem to love you anymore. It's working together for your good. Because why? There's a timeline of the Holy Ghost that he is working with. Which is the will of God? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Where do I get the issue of timeline? Let me tell you a secret that you don't know. One time I was in meditation and the Lord began to show me how some of our angels are working. Because the Holy Spirit works with angels. He's the, he's the captain of angels, right? He's the one in charge of the angels. Yeah. The whole angelic thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Amen. It's, it's something which I will teach some other time. Now, I realize that when angels have to guide you, they go to a library in heaven. There's a huge library in heaven. There is, there is, this is so deep what I'm teaching. Lord Jesus, I hope I won't mess up the message. Right? I hope I'll still mess up. They go and read a book that is written about you. About what? what to find a wisdom in something. Let's say you miss... 
Let's say you miss an opportunity that's supposed to come to you and you are in a wrong timeline. <laughs> are you here to observe that? You are in the what? Wrong timeline. You are in the wrong timeline. The angel will go and pick up a book of other timelines or opportunities and possibilities. Hmm, this is too deep. Because time is possibilities and opportunities. And he picks it up and gives you the wisdom. Now, apply here. Maybe we'll say apply here. For now, apply here. Right? And, and then that's the wisdom that you get. And you enter into the place. Okay, let me, let me ask you this. Have you ever heard of people talking about danger, deja vu? Mm. Have you heard of deja vu yeah. yes. before? Yeah. Where you feel like you've been here. Mm. That is when you're in the right timeline. If in your life there's no danger vu for five years, you are still being, tried to be ushered into the timeline that you are supposed to be. Are you hearing, are you hearing me right now? Mm. Have you ever had dreams of being in a place but you are not there? Mm. It is because there is a timeline of God that the Holy Spirit is working. When I'm saying it's working, is because there's your will also. I mean, you, you don't know everything. So sometimes you can be stubborn, you. <laughs> Are you here observe right now? <laughs> you can be stubborn and delay the process because of your stubbornness. So that's why sometimes, you know, you know say hallelujah. hallelujah. I remember one time when, when my mom passed on, right? Went to be with the Lord. I was, doing my, I was studying my high school. And when I went to Limpompo, that's why I knew that I was in the timeline, right? Before I went to Limpompo, in fact, my brother was applying to study here at, at UCT. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Mm -hmm. And when I touched the brochure, I saw myself here clearly like, like, like blueprint. And I told him that I'm going to go to Cape Town. He said, ah. I said, that's what the Lord is saying. I'm going to go to Cape Town. Then I had another vision. I was in, in the classroom in Himpompo. People were talking a language I could not hear them. I could not understand what they are talking. Right? When my mom passed on, that's when now my uncle took us. We were there. Danger vu happened. Ah, how I've been here before. <laughs> are you what I'm saying? That means God was putting me in that time. Man. And from there on, it begins to prepare me for ministry. And then I had another one. Now my timeline got disturbed at some point. When I, because I passed well at school and now my family wanted me to, to rush to come to Cape Town. I knew that I would come to UCT, but I had to first go to, to Joburg and do a gap year and study, um, you know, teaching, studying ministry, you know, through, through a certain university of Christ Embassy, actually. I was supposed to go and study there. They were having a school of something. And my family really felt that I need to go to school first. They took me off the timeline. I came in here very early than, than, than I was supposed to. And I cried. I, you know, right now. I realized I'm out. There's no danger vu now. This is not the danger vu. The danger vu is supposed to be that side. I don't know if somebody is what I'm saying right now. I, are you understanding what I'm saying right now? So the Holy Spirit is making intercession for you for according to the what? The will of God. Although that timeline was missed, but the Holy Spirit has a way. Right now, I always see myself in this country. The USA, right? It's so strange. It's so strange. I've lived there. I've what? Yeah, I'm telling you now because when it happens, then you'll know that I told you. Normally, I don't share the things that everything I've seen, everything. My going to the flights, going there, everything. Yeah, when I say everything, I mean what? Everything. everything. I mean everything. Even, even some few weeks ago, same thing. I was in another state there i never know the name of that state i never knew the name of that state but when we do the research and i discovered there's a state there's a city like that huh i was even shocked what are you hearing what i'm saying right now and i was landing there several times i see going there are you, are you hearing what i'm saying right now are, are you understanding what i'm saying right now why why this is the lord bringing me back to what to a timeline sometimes i saw people i was ministering to them there preaching to them and already we're having people that are connecting from that side it's not a surprise it's not a what surprise. it's not a surprise it's the timeline so when i say all things work together for good is that everything works together whether today your job comes to an end it works together for good maybe the lord wants to open that opportunity somewhere where you are supposed to be at this time Did somebody understand what i'm saying right now Amen. allow the holy ghost to work through you 
Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say all things work together. All, all things work together. For my good. For my this good. This is not my same word, but let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> um, he says, all things work together according to his purpose, right? Yeah. Verse 29, he says, for those whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn amongst many, what? Brethren. You see, now he's talking about what we spoke about, predestination. Now I'm rushing there. Eh? predestination verse 30 he says for those whom he predestined he called and those he called he also justified and those whom he justified he also what glorified mm -hmm. say hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah say hallelujah. hallelujah then he conclude by saying because of this process that is done to us what shall we say then to these things if God is for us, mm. who can be against us? Amen. Do you hear that? Paul is boldly speaking now. If God has done all these things, then what shall we say? Mm. What shall I say? Mm. That I'm justified. I'm adopted. And what shall I say? If God yes. is for me, who can be against me? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Verse 32, he says, he says, he did not, he who did not spare his own, own son, but gave him up for all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things. That's what's Paul's conclusion. I don't know what is your conclusion after you read the gospel. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Who shall bring any charge against God elect? For it is God that justifies it. You see now he's continuing again. He says who can bring a charge against you? Who can come and speak against you? And bring a charge that hey look at you and this and this. He says because God justified you. Say God justified me. God God justified. He says who who is to condemn? Christ is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who is indeed is interceding for us. What is he saying? He says, who can condemn you? No one can because Jesus died for you and he rose again from the grave. Do you see that? Amen. Then he comes in verse 35. He says, who shall separate us then from the love of God? Mm. Hey, do you see that? He said, now who shall separate us from the love? Shall tribulation? No. Distress? No. Persecution? No. Famine? No. Nakedness? Ooh, no. Or danger. You see, nakedness, it means what? When Adam and Eve fell, they were naked. He says, even nakedness will not. He says, or danger, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we have been killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. He's talking about them as apostles, right? Verse 37 says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors Amen. through him who loves us. Amen. That means I'm more than a conqueror in persecution. Mm. I'm more than a conqueror. Let me just open it quickly. <laughs> Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Where is it? 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 Oh my God. I'm looking for these scriptures now. Oh dear Lord Jesus. Okay. In persecution, he says what? I'm more than a conquer. In tribulation, in distress, in famine, in nakedness, in danger, in sword. He says, I'm what? I'm, I'm more, more than, than a conqueror conquer. through Christ. What? Who loves me? Verse number 38. He says, for I am sure that neither death nor life, no angels, no rulers, no things present, no things to come, no powers. Oh my God. No heights, no depth, no any else in all creation will be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ, is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It says nothing. Mm. Say nothing. nothing. Say nothing. nothing. Do you see that? Yeah. Nothing. It says, if I see the codifications of the gospel, I see predestined, predestined, elected, justified, sanctified, glorified, adopted. What can separate me from the love of God? Mm. He says, I look, what is it? I see the, the, the mission of the Holy Spirit in me. He comes, no condemnation because of what Jesus did. I see that. And then the Holy Spirit comes. He makes me to be in the Spirit. He, 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 he helps me in my weaknesses. He prepares me for glorification. And he's not going anywhere. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. I'm not seeing anything in the gospel that gives a gap for me to come out. I don't see a space in the gospel that gives me a gift for God to say, I loved you before, now I, now I don't. He says, I don't see it. Say, I don't see it. I don't see it. He says, nothing can separate me. Yeah. Definitely nothing. Because why? I am called. 
I am predestined. I am elected. I am justified. I'm sanctified. And I am in the glorification. I'm about to be glorified. Mm -hmm. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say I'm about to be glorified. I'm about to be glorified. Now let's go to, to 1 Corinthians. I want to show you something. Now we're talking about glorification. Yes. Now what is glorification? Let me just read for you what the Lord said. Right? Amen. This is what the Lord said to me. Rapture is our glorification. Rapture. When the Bible says we shall be glorified, rapture is part of salvation. Remember there was a time where we used to teach who's going to be raptured and who's not going to be. I'm no longer there. Because rapture is not a separated event from our salvation. It is part of our salvation. It is what? Part of our salvation. Rapture is part of your salvation. Don't treat it like it's not, it's something that will be chosen for some. No, it's part of your salvation. Rapture is part of your salvation. When we talk of glorification, we talk of rapture. That's where glorification will take place. Can, can, can I show you in the Bible? Yeah. Let me just, this scripture did not plan it. Let me show you. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to show you now quickly. I just want to just wanna verify the scripture. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Mm hmm Glory to God. <laughs> I'm just, I want to give you the scripture so that you see. First Corinthians chapter 15. Let's go to first Corinthians 15. In fact, first Corinthians 15 has a lot. Let's just go there. I want to show you something. First Corinthians 15. Are you here? Amen. 15, verse number... Uh, should I start in 52 or... Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let's first start in verse. I hope you are you are loving the Bible. Are you loving the Bible? Oh, yes. Okay. Let's first start in in verse fifty. Right. Listen to what he says in verse 60, 50, ne? Verse fifty. He says, "Are you in verse 50? ECV says, "I tell you, these brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God." Nor does perishable inherit imperishable. He tells you about your body. You what? Your body. This body cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now, when people now read this religiously, they think they think of it in the state of of sinning and all that. No, no, no. He's talking about this what? The this body. body. Flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God, right? Mm -hmm. Nor does perishable, because it's perish perishing, neither inherit the imperishable verse 51 it says behold i tell you a mystery when it shall happen right when glorification shall happen we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed otherwise we are not all gonna die mm. some of us we do we will not die first before rapture meets us right some of us will still be alive mm. right he says we shall not all sleep but we shall be, we shall all be what Change. be changed because it's what glorification in a moment, this is too much. It shall happen. You know what moment is? Moment is split second. You know a second? Moment is like a split second. It's just the moment. It will happen. We are seated here. Maybe I'm talking moment, but we are gone. Quickly, our body change and we're out of here. Say, ah. Say, hallelujah. hallelujah. Did somebody hear this? Amen. That's why I said it's so difficult for me to explain it. But because we don't, we cannot phantom it. Say hallelujah. Mm -hmm. In the moment, verse 52. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Like this, when I do, twinkling of the eye, right? At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. And the dead will be raised imperishable. And we shall be changed. For this imperishable body must put on imperishable 
and Im and mortality must put on immortality can i read it in king james especially this part let me just change to king james i know you guys have king james there right let me change it to king james i want, I want to read i want you i want you to see where's king james now oh you are using a phone sometimes king james right okay i want you to see this this is too beautiful king james put it very beautiful say hallelujah he says, verse 52, In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall what? Shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on what? Incorruptible. And this mortality must put on what? Immortality. That's glorification. Why glorification happened is because your body must receive the imperishable body. Right? Yeah. The change of bodies. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So that we can be like Christ. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me show you another scripture again. Why I'm saying rapture is glorification. Right? Amen. I'm just I'm just opening these scriptures. First Thessalonians chapter four. First Thessalonians chapter four. Open it in your Bible. Let me just open it. Chapter four, first Thessalonians, eh? Are you here? Oh yes. Are you blessed? We are blessed. Are you blessed? Amen. Say we are blessed. We are blessed. Now, verse 13, right? Glorification is at rapture. It's part of your salvation. Rapture is not separated from your salvation. Those that he justified, he also what? Glorified. Now, listen to verse 13, he says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that are asleep. When, whenever the Bible says they are asleep, it means those who are no longer with us, right? Mm -hmm. But who are in the faith. They are, they are not called dead according to biblical knowledge or spiritual truth. They are called that they are what? They are sleeping. He says, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. He says, you must not be so sorrowful as if you don't have hope. Right? Verse 14, he says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleeps in Jesus, will God bring them with him. Right? Verse number 15. I'm on King James, right? Verse 15, he says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Right? Verse 16, he says, For the Lord himself shall descend, right, mm. from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So this is what's going to happen. He's explaining to you when rapture happened. The Lord shall descend. Right? In the cloud. The dead in Christ shall what? Shall rise first. Those that died believing in Jesus Christ. Right? Mm. Then he says, Then we, verse 17, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, confront one another with these words. Is somebody seeing this? Amen. Is somebody seeing this? Amen. This is when glorification happened. It happens in rapture. Say it happens in rapture. It happens it happens in rapture. Say it happens in rapture. it happens in rapture. Let me open another scripture for you, which the Lord wanted me to open for you. First John chapter 3. This is how John puts it. First John chapter 3. From verse 1 first to verse 3. Right? Do you see it? Are we there? First John chapter one. Oh, sorry, First John chapter three, chapter three, verse one. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the what? The sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verse two. Be beloved, now are we the sons of God, 
And it does not yet appear what we shall be. You see, even him says, we don't know what we shall look like. Right? Mm -hmm. When the glorification happens, we cannot even tell you how we shall look like. Right? Mm -hmm. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. For we shall see him as he is. Mm -hmm. He says, one thing we know is this. When Jesus appears, we shall be like him. The Holy Ghost will just say, moment. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. He says, and every man that has this hope purified himself, even as he is pure. Say, even as he is pure. Even even as he is pure. pure. You see, when, when rapture happened, this is, let me read what the Lord said first of all. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. The gospel that we preach, now I'll write this down for you. The gospel that we preach is what God has saved us from. But glorification is what you are saved into. Mark that. This is very important. Right? The gospel is what you are saved what? From. You have been saved from your sins. Right? From the judgment that is to come. Do you hear this? Yeah. Jesus Christ did the work what he saved you from. Right? Yeah. But glorification which is what he has promised us to, is what we are saved into. Greater is what we are saved into. Do you understand this? It's what you are saved into. I was like, yeah? Okay, all right. Like what he says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says, No eyes have seen, no ears have heard, neither has it entered into a mind of men the things that God has prepared for them that loved him. Because what we are saving to, beloved, is very big. No mind can fathom it. You know, we can talk about it here. Hallelujah. You know, but we, 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 can, we, don't, we don't understand how big it is, what we are saving to. Say, so it's, what, it's what I'm saving to. It's what I'm saving. And what is also glorification? It's when now the true adoption takes place. It has already taken place. That's what Pastor John tells us. Now are we the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. But we have not yet understood it until glorification. Until what? Glorification, glorification is what is the final stage of your salvation. It is what we are saving to. Oh my God. Oh my God. So you are saved from hell? Yes, I'm saved from hell. I'm safe from sin. I'm safe from judgment. But 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 what you are saving to, your mind cannot understand it. Your mind will never find on it. It's far greater. Say it's far greater. It's far, far greater. greater. Can you imagine? I'm trying to even make examples, and no example is coming. I'm like, Lord, give me an example. But they say the Bible says, No eyes kept see. No ears have heard. Because glorification is what I'm saving to. I'm safe. To be a son of God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, even if I say I'm a son of God, but I've not yet understood it to the level where we'll understand it in glorification. Is somebody here what I'm saying? Amen. And who's doing the glorification? It's the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says he's been given unto us as the seal, the guarantee of our salvation until glorification. Mm -hmm. Say until glorification. Until. Now, what have you learned here? Rapture is not separated from your salvation. The day you believed, you were assigned for rapture. Mm. You were what? Assigned, assigned for rapture. Because rapture is part of the codification. Because glorification happens in rapture. Mm. So, so that, who's going to miss rapture? If I miss rapture, I'll just make sure that the enemy doesn't behead my, the antichrist doesn't behead my head. That's not for you. That's not for who? It's for those that did not believe that will have to go through that process. But you who believed, you who what? Believe. You who believed, your glorification, your it's like it's like for example, you have already been given a reserved ticket, right? That you are going to be in a banquet, a royal banquet. Your place, your seat already has your name. And you, you are trying all you can. I don't know if I'll make it. I don't know if they will still, they will invoke my, my seat. Everything is ready. Your clothes attire is ready. 
Everything is ready. You, it, we are just waiting for the date. For you to be officially announced as a priest. Right? As a prince. And a princess of royalty. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter right now how you look like. But you are royalty. Because it has already been said. It's the same thing as... I'm trying to come up with something here. Somebody understand what I'm saying right now? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as us. The fact that we believed. We, we don't know. Hey! Jesus! My God! The more I talk about it, it's like... Something happens in my spirit. The Holy Spirit jumps in me. What God has prepared for us is far greater. That's why I tell people, I say, do not be fooled. Do not be deceived by, by this other religion. What God has prepared for us is far greater. It's far what? Far it's beyond you having a car. It's beyond you getting a job. It's something to... Glorification is what will make you say, oh my God, even half of it was not told to me. Like the like the the queen the queen of uh, uh, what is this the queen of um, of Ethiopia, right? Mm. Who who met who met Solomon, and he had the glory of Solomon the glory of Solomon, but when he got there, he says, "I looked at the cup that the servants of Solomon were using; mm. it was gold." He says, "I look at the clothes that the servants of Solomon were wearing; it was way expensive." Mm. He says. He says, when I look at everything and the glory, he says, half of it was not told me. That's how it will be when we get to heaven. Mm. Yes, you have heard the gospel. Yes, you have heard what Jesus has done. You are so excited. But when you get there, you say, half of it was not told me. Because you start looking at what I've been saved to is far greater than what I've heard. That's how it will be. Because you wonder that hey, I'm royal. You know, I used to speak these things, but I did not get it. No. Now what you see now, angels, when they welcome you, they welcome you with, with something. Like, oh my gosh. You, you, you feel like... I, are you understanding what I'm saying right now? Amen. This is the hope of the believer. Glorification. Is the what? The, hope. the faith of the believer is what Jesus has done. Justifying you. Through his blood. Right? Sanctifying you by the Holy Spirit. That's the faith. But the hope... Glorification. So, 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 so. Rapture is not separated from your salvation. Say it's not separated. It's not separated from my salvation. From salvation. Rapture, Rapture is the end, the end of my salvation. Of salvation. Yeah. Your salvation has, has faith and your salvation also has what? Has hope. And the hope of your salvation is what? Glorification. So that's why the Bible says, anyone who has this hope in himself, purifies himself. Each and every time you think you are going through something, just think of the hope. What God, what is awaiting for you? It's far greater than what you can think. It's far greater. Say hallelujah. The Bible says, some of the people in the Bible, he says they sought for that glorification. By faith, they sought for it. They never wanted to live in this world. And God was pleased. <laughs> are you what I'm saying? Right there? there are people. One of them was Enoch. Enoch, what we got, he wanted to see this place. He says no, until he was taken. Not that he died. He never even died. His body was never found. He was translated. That's where the rapture, the rapture possibility revelation started. Because what God did to Enoch, He promised to do it to us. Because Enoch was changed, transformed, and now he was a heavenly being without dying. Without what? Dying. But the Bible says, even those that died, they will first rise. Even those that remain, they will also go to the glorification process. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Can you imagine that? Mm. Look at how beautiful it is. And when you enter there in heaven, you look at the streets. You look at the colors. Dear Jesus you look at yourself, the glory that you have, you see, we'll say half of it was not told me. Mm. I'm telling you, even myself, I know God told me this. Says, you will say like that queen of, of Ethiopia who said to Solomon half of it, you will also say the same thing. You will say about my glory. When I reach heaven, half of it was not told me. Last scripture, First Colossians, we are done. First Colossians chapter 1. Right? Amen. Verse 
First Colossians 1 verse 27. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Are, you, are you getting something? Yes, yes. Hey, are you getting something? Oh, yes. Yes. Listen to what it says. 127. 127. Colossians. 127. Listen to what it says. He says, to, to, to whom God would make known what are the riches of the glory of the mystery amongst the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, the, the Christ in you is the hope of glorification. The Holy Spirit in you, because that is Christ in you. Remember, Christ is the spirit of Christ. When the Holy Spirit came to Jesus, it was called Jesus Christ, right? Mm. So Christ in you, the Holy Spirit is Christ in you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yeah. Christ in you is the hope of glorification. He's already doing the work in us. He's already what? Doing the work in us. Yeah. He's the hope of glorification. So if someone says, am I going to make it scripture? Am I not? Stop that. Because you are doubting what God has done. Right? Yeah. Christ in you. The what? Christ. What is Christ in you? The hope of glory. Mm. The hope of rapture. The hope of glorification. Because he's in me. Because he's in me. Say he is in me. Because he's in me. I am set up for life. I am set up for eternity. Christ in me. The hope of glory. Do you see it? He's the hope of glory. Your union with Christ is the hope of glory. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus Christ. I thought after sharing such a big blow, you would clap hands like a serious. You clap your hands for Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, is your hope of glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. For we know that glorification and adoption, the manifestation of sons of God, is part of the process of our salvation. It's something which is part of the codification. And we thank you that, Father, he that began a good work indeed in us shall accomplish it until the day of Jesus Christ. Christ in us, the hope of glorification. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you. I pray that they might have this hope in them. Because no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, neither has it come into our mind, the thing that you are about to blow us with. Yes, we can read about it, but the day we see it, we shall say, like that Ethiopian queen, that half of it, even quarter of it, was not told us. We thank you, Father. Pray that, Lord, you give each and every one of us this understanding. You give those that are watching me online this understanding. For everybody that has this hope in himself, purify it himself, even as he is pure. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. We glorify you Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's clap hands for Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's why the Bible says, maintain your confession. All right? Amen. That's why the Bible says, he that believe till the end shall be saved. What is it talking about? Glorification. I hope you have been blessed by this word. Amen. I've tried by all means to make it simple for you, but it's, it's, it's quite it's something we cannot understand. Glorification is when we look like Jesus for real. For real. Say for real. For real. For real. Love you so much and God bless you. Have a wonderful week. I want you to know that God is, you are blessed. You are blessed. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because the blessing of Abraham is in operation in this world. That's what other people don't understand. While we are waiting, Let's operate in the blessing of Abraham. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And we are waiting in hope because when we get there now is glorification. It's now what? Glorification. It's glorification now. But here, it's the faith in what God has done and the blessing of Abraham. The faith of what God has done and the blessing of Abraham. When Jesus comes, now is glorification. Love you so much. See you again on Friday for a wonderful, wonderful word of God. Uh, that we're going to have the Lord will give us instruction what to teach on. I'm so glad that we have had a wonderful time talking about codification of the gospel. You know, my, my, my advice to you and all that are here today is that you might, you might have to go back and listen to these teachings again mm -hmm. and build yourself up in these teachings again because they are life-changing. 
they are life changing. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. I love you so much. God bless you. See you again on Friday. Have a wonderful week ahead of you. Productive. You remember you have the blessing of Abraham and you shall be fruitful in what you do. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. You shall be fruitful in what you do. You are blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. Love you so much and shalom. I decree and I declare over your life in this year, the year 5784, I declare you door over your life in the name of Jesus. I declare stubborn doors that were closed to be open for you in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that you will possess the gates of your enemies. You possess the gates that have your inheritance. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that in this coming year, floods, in this coming year, floods shall be poured out on you of blessings from above. Windows shall be opened for you. For it is a season of open doors. It is a season of gates. It is a season of windows be opened up unto you. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare in your life, you shall have authority above every gate. You shall possess every gate, for heaven is open up for you. You are operating under the open heaven. It is your time, it is your moment. I decree and I declare in your life that your dryness is ended, your stagnation is ended, your setback is ended. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord said I should inform you that rivers of living water shall overflow from you. They shall overflow from you as you possess the gates. They shall overflow from you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you shall possess the gates of your business. You shall possess the gates of your job. You shall possess the gates of your career. You shall possess the gates of the city. You shall possess the gates, the gates, the gate. You shall possess the gate. You shall be in charge. For no weapon from against you shall prosper. The Lord shall be mighty with you in this season to possess every gate where you were struggling before. This time you shall make it where it was tough before. This time you shall make it. Your capacity shall be increased in the name of Jesus. Say this to Zebubabel that it is not by mighty, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So it shall be for you, but not by mighty, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. You shall possess the gates. You shall possess the gates. Open heaven is open for you. Doors are open up for you. Windows are open up for you. You will never fail. In the name of Jesus. It is your time. It is your moment. Receive these declarations. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are blessed. I decree and I declare over your life. In this year. The year 5784, I declare you door over your life. In the name of Jesus, I declare stubborn doors that were closed to be open for you. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that you will possess the gates of your enemies. You possess the gates that have your inheritance. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that in this coming year, floods in this coming year, Floods shall be poured out on you of blessings from above. Windows shall be opened for you. For it is a season of open doors. It is a season of gates. It is a season of windows be opened up unto you. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare in your life, you shall have authority above every gate. You shall possess every gate. For heaven is open up for you. You are operating under the open heaven. It is your time, it is your moment. I decree and I declare in your life that your dryness has ended, your stagnation has ended, your setback has ended. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord said I should inform you that rivers of living water shall overflow from you. They shall overflow from you as you possess the gates. They shall overflow from you. In the name of Jesus Christ.
you shall possess the gates of your business you shall possess the gates of your job you shall possess the gates of your career you shall possess the gates of the city you shall possess the gates the gates the gates you shall possess the gates you shall be in charge for no weapon formed against you shall prosper the lord shall be mighty with you in this season to possess every gate where you were struggling before this time you shall make it where it was tough before this time you shall make it your capacity shall be increased in the name of jesus say this to zebubabel that it is not by mighty not by power but by my spirit say the lord so it shall be for you but not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord, you shall possess the gates. You shall possess the gates. Open heaven is open for you. Doors are open up for you. Windows are open up for you. You will never fail. In the name of Jesus, carry them.